Chris? Hey, Mike. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Great day. Okay, so we got some people joining us now. So I'm going to get started with a little intro. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining uh, Zeifman's non-resident digital event series, Technology and Startups Edition. And today's topic is expansion and innovation. Um, I'm Michael McGee. I'm a manager at Zeifman's, and I'm a member of Zeifman's technology and startups team. Um, first, a little bit about Zeifman's uh, quickly. Uh, we're a full-service tax accounting and consulting firm based in Toronto, Canada. We have over 9,000 clients that we service through every, for ev but through every step of the business. Our services include uh, business advisory, valuation, corporate finance, transaction services, corporate turnaround, insolvency, and estate and succession planning. Um, so everyone that's joined us, feel free to ask any questions throughout. Um, me and Chris will try to address as many as we can at the end of our interview. And with that, uh, Chris, tell us a little about yourself. He's the co-director at Entrepreneurial Studies at Schulich School of Business in Toronto. Um, so yeah, Chris, tell us a little about yourself. Hey everybody, Chris here. I'm happy to join you today. My name's Chris, I'm a serial entrepreneur in the technology and innovation space in Toronto. I've been at it for about 25 years now, having started my first business out of my living room with $2,000 and two computers and a cat. And uh, these days I work teaching entrepreneurship and startups at the Schulich School of Business at York University and also run the Schulich Startups Program, which has 150 student or graduate companies as part of the portfolio. Awesome. So I'm going to get into a couple questions right away here. Um, so you work with a lot of startups and knowing that startups need consistent advice throughout every stage of the business. How would you uh, tell a new entrepreneur um, how to go and source quality, uh, you know, mentors and key business advisors. I think there's a, there's two key things to that. Number one is that there's a lot of high quality advisors that spend time around the accelerators and the startup communities. So participating in those startup communities, um, you'll get to know other entrepreneurs and you'll get advice from them right away as to like, who are they using? Who do they trust? Who are the people that they turn to? I know within the Schulich Startups community, for example, you know, we have our relationship and, and uh, connection with Zeitman's people like Achman and Steven, and they're spent time working with so many of our companies. If you go to a Schulich Startups event, people would tell you that are the other founders, hey, I work with these guys and here's why they're great. So that kind of that endorsement from third party is a huge deal. And that's about getting out there, spending time, even in this remote world, there's so many events you can go to to meet people, network and connect, whether it's in chat or in the video. So that kind of getting out there and, and, and finding out who people respect and who people are using. That's like an, on the advisor side. On the mentor side, I really think the big secret, like if you ask me like Chris, how have you landed the biggest mentors and the biggest you know, people in your life who at an early stage helped you out? Here's the trick. Most people go looking for the mentor and they're like, hey mentor, can you help me out? I, I need stuff and you'd be great, can you mentor me? Well, the biggest mentors that I ever got, I went and helped them first. So as the person who was seeking them as a mentor, I found a charity that they work, were working on, some campaign that they were involved in, a cause that they were, they're, they're alumni academically. And I found a way to get on a committee or support what they were doing and get behind it and make a deep impact and connection to build respect with that mentor. And then when I had helped them out for months, then I would say, you know, I have something I need some advice on. And then they would say, Chris, for sure, here, let's sit down and talk about it. And I scored some unbelievable mentors all the way up to at one point, I had the then head of the Boston Consulting Group in Canada, David Pico, since passed away, he was a good friend. It started with us volunteering on the SARS recovery campaign to help him out. And when we helped them out for three or four months and asked him for help, he became a huge mentor and gave us the biggest advice we ever had. So that's the advice I give people. Like when you're looking for that top, top mentor, think about how you can help them as much as how they can help you. That's awesome. So yeah, you're saying, you know, all that lead time that, you know, you put in the work and you might get a lifelong mentor that's there throughout your whole uh, career. That's awesome. Abs abs absolutely. Like if you really want to get that, like that top person to, to help you out. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Next question I have for you. Um, so you work very early stage with some of these uh, these students at Schulich 
and you know everywhere in Toronto, I bet. Um, so when they are when they're at the idea stage and they're starting their business, um, when would you when would it be time for them to start looking at bringing on more advisors that you know to help them grow? Like w at what stage would they start looking at finding uh, an, a key advisor to their business? Yeah, and again, three categories like advisors, mentors, and maybe investors, and I'll take them in different different stages. Overall, I think the biggest mistake that people make at an early stage is they're trying to do everything themselves. Now, it's really good to like dabble in everything to teach yourself things from like understanding code to understanding like how your books work. You want to understand these things because otherwise you can't have a proper conversation with the advisors, right? Or you'll never really know, um, you know, what's happening <laughs> with the portfolio of like advice that you're getting. So it's good to learn. It's good to dabble. But it's not good to be like holding everything to yourself and saying, I'm going to do all that. And I learned this firsthand early on when I started out back in 1995. I am not ashamed to tell you that I sent out every invoice myself as Word documents, one by one, editing them, saving them in files that had no accounting system. Now, I got the company to the point where with that system, we had a million dollars in business. But my God, the day that I hired my first accounting firm to help me out. What a day that was that I didn't have to sit up all night mass producing hand printed invoices anymore. And really, it's all about time management. Like, where is your time best used? Where right. is it best leveraged? So is my time best leveraged actually like, you know, doing that? Or is it like having a great partner, a great firm who can take care of those things? OK, and help that happen, too. Right. Can there be strategic benefit in things that are unlocked because of like relationships, insights, connections. You know, you work with a great firm, advisory firm, accounting firm, and before you know it, they've introduced you to like 15 ways that you could like leverage government grant programs or get returns off of the R&D that you're doing. And suddenly, what for you, you were holding on to, by hiring this firm, you've actually have like a stream of like new possibility coming into the business. It could be hundreds of thousands of dollars to help grow the company. So you need to look at those things that not just, not just like, it's a cost. It's an opportunity cost of not finding the buckets of possibility in terms of how people can help you out. In terms of mentors, same thing, like right away, but you gotta find the right people who want to be involved. I'll take mentors and, and investors a little bit together. So you really wanna like date before you get married to people in that sense, right? You want them to show that they get you they get the company, they're consistently making time for you, and they have like a proper network. So can they introduce you to people? Can they point you to insights? Do they look at, at, uh, at your business proactively? And then you can start to formalize something over time. Maybe you then have the opportunity for them to invest into the company. Maybe they become on your advisory board as a mentor and they have like some options or some upside in the business, but you, you, you kind of like, you enter those, those relationships more slowly. Key advisors that are professional firms, you get them and you work with them quick. You make the right decision, you check your network, make sure that they have a great reputation. But then with these other categories, you really gotta get to know them a bit first before you let them into your world. Because once they're, you know, they're on your cap table, you're stuck. Right, yeah, that used to be big in the, when we could actually talk to each other, you could actually go out and have a dinner and a meal with someone, now it's, going to be a new world of that one but yeah that that's all amazing points well you know what's interesting mike is that more recently i've i've heard some examples like one of our companies from the Schulich startups uh, uh portfolio uh is a company called swift and uh they just went through the process uh earlier in the summer of raising 3.5 million dollars and they're doing great adil's amazing uh founder a Schulich alumni he's doing great work when they closed they had a number of like networking dinners where partners from different parts of the United States that were involved in making the final decision on the investment. And he and his team all had dinner together virtually because oh, really? they were they're having a drink and they were like relaxed and they were eating and it just changes the, the, the tenor even of a Zoom call in terms of like how you're connecting with people and how you're understanding that. So uh, people are finding ways, you know, um, you know, I, w yeah. I, w I wish you had shipped me a coffee and a, and a croissant this morning for a call here, but you know, people's, yeah. people are still finding ways to connect like that. Yeah, no, it's going to be interesting watching how that grows. Um, okay, next question for you. Um, so you work with a lot of tech companies and um, 
So how, in your opinion, what makes Canadian business talent stand out among other leading tech countries? I'll tell you what I think makes the young Canadian business talent that I'm working with, the young graduates, the students at Schulich, York University, and other networks as well that we're connected to, is that there's this really powerful combination of young people who understand design. Like they, they process the world and think of the world in like everything, how it's from their, from their dining room table to the app that they're using to like um, a place that they go, how it's designed. Really immersed in tech, right? Grown up with tech access, huge smartphone penetration in Canada, grown up using that and, and, and connected with it. A lot of like good, you know, good pr uh, programming in the schools now, teaching people to code, getting them comfortable with the in inside workings of technology. And then you've got like a sense of like, a, like an open-minded and very positive sense of business and its purpose in the world. Doing good things, helping people, employing people, you know, being a good, you know, uh, thinking sustainability, thinking about sustainability, thinking about the environment, thinking about like, you know, social purpose. So you combine those things together as a young set of Canadian entrepreneurs and you've got a lot of talent and you've got a lot of purpose that goes together. The last thing that makes our community very different in terms of my experience is that I've traveled to other countries and been to other ecosystems. And, and this is not a universal rule, but there's a lot of internal competition, right? It's good. There's a lot of internal competition. What I find is amazing about Canada, and I'm going to speak specifically to Toronto in this case and in terms of being located here, is that there's a sense of collective prosperity, right? Like you will not meet someone who will not, if they can't help you or they're not going to be able to invest in you, you will not meet someone here who won't say, but I know who could, right? right. Like, and, and there's yeah. this sense of like, we're all going to win. We're all in it together. We're building an ecosystem that's amazing. We're building a city that is incredible and has like a, a, a cultural diversity and an openness and also a desire to do great things in the world and be leaders that we're all on the same page. And the amazing part is that no one ever told us we had to do it. You can't really even point to like a single leader. I mean, Mayor Tory has been amazing as the mayor of Toronto with rallying some of these things together, but you can't really point to one human being in the city. It's more this like collective of people who just get it and want to do great things and help each other. So that makes my job easy with like helping these young companies. There's always people who are ready to help chip in, spend time. And that's what makes me so proud about this ecosystem and about the Canadian entrepreneurs. The ones who have gone forward and succeeded and sold their companies, the ones that are going through that process now and how the next generation is being kind of like taught to engage within the ecosystem is gonna be a huge asset for the city and for the country for decades to come. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I saw that firsthand by joining one of Schulich's Idea Jams and you know, you have all these, this community of people that really have nothing in that business, but they're just there to help and give resources. And they were like, I'm going to give you this after this call. I'm going to send you this. Can you give me the name of that company? And it's an amazing community about people that really have no horse in the race, but they're just there to grow the tech community. So and we should, it, we should, we should explain for people who are watching like really quick, a Schulich Idea Jam is where we take a, a young up and coming Schulich startup company. And then we bring together a room of like, it could be 20 to 40 people, alumni, external uh, community members, students, some faculty, and the young startup puts forward its biggest problem or biggest opportunity that it has. And then the room goes through a collective exercise, the Zoom room now in this case, goes through a collective exercise of figuring out how we help them in breakout rooms together, creative exercises we do. And we do everything from helping people reimagine their go-to-market to actually renaming the whole company. And we do it in an hour and a half as a collective group of people, and it's super cool. No, it's amazing. And even some of the business owners, they're like, you've just shaved off three to four months in this hour and a half of, of ideas and problems that I'll have to work through. And back okay. to the point about getting yeah. advisors, mentors, right, and, and people to work with, it's all about that, Mike. You're right. It's about shaving off time. You are on like a, you know, your, your plane when you're flying that startup is like, is it coming to earth or is it ascending into the sky? And it's all about runway and time. And if you exactly. have a great advisor, like the people that we work with at Zeitman's, if you have a fantastic mentor, they are shaving time off that situation and giving you more chance to ascend into the sky. Exactly, I agree with you 100%. I got one more for you. Um, so when, uh, 
when you're telling someone, uh, a new business owner, you know, to, when they're seeking out advisors, what, what do you tell them that they should be looking at in terms of advisors, mentors? What, what quality specifically are you telling them? Like, uh, would it be their background? Would it be their history? Would it be, you know, what, what do you think? Well, obviously you're right, Mike. There's a collection of things there, everything from their network to like their specific industry sectoral expertise that could be so valuable. But assuming you've got those things as a starting point nailed down, the number one thing that I'm asking people to look for is a combination of being able to listen to you and push you at the same time. See, a mentor doesn't work if they can't push you, right? If they can't, you know, tell you and pick up the phone and call you when they know you need to do something. That company that I referred to from Schulich Startup Swift and Adil, the founder, right after the pandemic, he had a moment where he had to decide what he was going to do should he quit his full-time job and go full in on his company or should he keep his full-time job and not and we had a right. conversation about that and as part of that i pressed him to quit his job in the next 48 hours he did wow. that's his bold decision that's all on him full credit to him for doing it following through with it and going for it right 30 days later he'd raised 3.5 million dollars for his company okay but i was ready to push in that moment right and it almost in like to a little bit of discomfort that this is what he needed to do he knew it in his heart but he he knew it on his own but he right. just needed that push right. but at the same time you can't have a mentor who won't listen to you and is just telling you do 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 and doesn't really want to listen to like what's in your heart in terms of what you want to achieve with the company what's important to yourself personally and for your family or what it is that you're trying to achieve for your staff. So it's that combination of like the perfect combo is like they can push, but they can listen. And then they can right. step back again and they can push again at the right time. And let's say it's finding someone who has that, that is more valuable than anything else. Yes, someone that you can have a conversation with and uh, you know, not a dictatorship of telling them do this, this, this. It's a conversation and building them up and creating the entrepreneur. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, so thank you for taking time to join us. Um, where can people find you if uh, they want to reach out? Um, yeah, we'd love to have everyone follow us at Schulich Startups here at the account. Um, this is where we announce all of our events, like those idea jams. We have a big event coming up on November 5th, Schulich Startup Night in the evening, where our top student and top alumni companies will be competing. And we have one of our serial entrepreneur alumni investors who's coming out to give a Fireside Chat as well, Mudit Rawat, and we're excited for that. So it follows at Schulich Startups or find us on LinkedIn as well under Schulich Startups as well. It's been great to hang out with you. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, look forward to talking to you and seeing you on some more Idea Jams. I uh, will see you there. Take thanks, care. Mike. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.